Coming up in this video, I want to talk to you about something that I'm definitely guilty of, and I bet you are too. I know you know what this video is all about because it says so on a damn thumbnail, but right off the bat, I for one, a super guilty of banging on about the fact that a file or an image doesn't become a picture until it's printed. It needs to be something you can hold, something that's tangible, something you can wiggle around if you like. That, in theory, has to be the completed element of this wonderful thing that we call photography. So, I have decided to practice what I preach. There's nothing worse than a preacher who doesn't practice. Practice, preach, preacher. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Either way, I've decided to right my wrongs. I've got hold of one of these. I'm gonna print for myself a lot more. When I say for myself, let me explain. Through my workplace, i.e. my studio, I've spent the last 20 years printing, printing, and printing some more. It doesn't look like it, by the way, because you can't see any prints on the walls, but uh, trust me, there's lots of prints around. We're just doing some work in the studio at the moment. But yeah, um, just to select a few prints. I mean, oh, I just love that gorgeous black and white. The colors, oh, I just love. Ooh, that's an old picture. I bet that's about 12, 15 year old. That but Anyway, right, okay. So the point I'm making is this. I print and have printed for the past 20 years, but when it comes to my personal work, i.e. my landscape photography, i.e. for me, I do print, but I print quite sporadically, usually for competitions or just to check out the quality of the images I'm taking. Every now and again, I'll create a big image and I'll hang it on the studio wall or somewhere like that. But, guilty as charged, I just don't print enough. And because I get lots of people asking me how I go about printing my images, I've decided to create this video tutorial. Everything you need to know to take your image from a file to a physical print. To a physical print using a home printer. This is a how and a why guide, really. Before we come to the hows, the step-by-step -step process, I think it's a good idea to talk about why. In other words, in my opinion, why I feel that we should be printing more from home. I'm guilty of not printing enough, and I'm sure you guys are as well. But like I said earlier in the video, that's about to change. If you want to jump, by the way, if you want to skip to the hows, then I'll leave a timestamp down below. But it's really important, I feel, that you stick around to hear me out about the whys. Let's very briefly rewind. Let's go back to the pre-digital era. In the 70s and 80s, I know it's a long time ago, but we would go out, enjoy taking pictures, and all we would be left with is this thing here called a roll of film, which was excellent, by the way. I've got a few of these undeveloped that I'll have to get developed, but that's uh, a video for another day. But all we could do in those days was take a picture. Then you would send off your images to a lab or take them boot to boot to the chemist or whatever. And then some guy wearing a white lab coat that you would never see working possibly in a dark room or an automated dark room machine would then post-process your work. And then you would receive your images back as prints. So rewinding the clock back a bit, we would take pictures, we'd have nothing to do at the middle section in the post-processing, but we would end up with a physical product. Now some 40, 50 years on, the process has changed completely. Now it's the revolution, the age of the digital cameras, which is immense by the way. But now we have a digital camera, but now we don't or we no longer need to send our images off to a lab 
where a man wearing a white lab coat working in a room lit with a red light post processes our work now it's amazing because now we can take that image into Lightroom or ACR or Photoshop or whatever post-production software that you guys are using and we can play around with that image until our heart's content but that's normally now where it ends so go back to the 1970s this three-step process of taking processing and printing it was steps one and three we did then but now we pretty much do steps one and two and leave it at that I'm guilty of doing that I know I am and I'm sure some of you guys are as well and I think I think that's a real crime so I'm going to start printing more of my work from home just to complete that one two three cycle because I think it's a real shame I mean let's be honest when we upload our images to social media we get a few likes we get a few comments but it becomes fish and chip paper very quickly in other words it becomes yesterday's news when was the last time you look back at images that you took maybe three months ago a year ago or three years ago the chances are you probably don't and you probably won't and i'm the same social media upload it to my website if i think is good enough and it never sees the light of day again personally i think that's wrong i mean if you think about everything that goes into the planning stage to take the picture then it, it could be just as much fun at the planning stage when it comes to printing your images i mean for example color or black and white what size are we going to print where is it going to hang how are we going to hang it are we going to frame it are we going to add a mount you know basically this the display options are endless and we've not even covered what about printing on plain photographic paper or fine art paper or all these wonderful papers that you could find on the marketplace what about a paper you've never thought of before um, you know buy one of those print it see what it looks like now all of a sudden all of these um, parts of the equation are all adding to your personal stamp when it comes to how your images will eventually look I think it's as much fun doing that in the post stage as it is in the pre stage. But either way, it's part of the one, two, three process. And then when we've gone through all those fun calculations, this is the piece de resistance. Within minutes, we have our finished artwork in our hands, a tangible item, a physical item. This, in my opinion, is when a file becomes a picture oh i love it i do i love it i'm so embarrassed by the fact that i just haven't printed enough for of my own work from home but like i said countless times in this video that's going to change i do honestly feel that if you just take pictures and you miss out the printing process that you're missing a whole world of fun i do i, I do i'm going back to just I mean, listen, if I hold that to the mic, it's a great sound, isn't it? Listen, it is a great sound. <laughs> Before we get into my printing guide, let's talk about the elephant in the room. There's always an elephant in the room. Let's address that now before I get hammered in the comment section below. Let's talk about the comparison between printing from a lab and printing from home. And also, I can imagine the burning question will be, well, printing from home is so expensive. I'm sure you could picture this now because I certainly can. I can guarantee any online lab website that you go on to, you'll, you could see a banner. You could probably see a banner. You could picture this in your mind right now. Fine art images from £9.95. It all sounds good and we've all clicked on those banners. I can guarantee you that. But the word that's special here, the word that's important is the word from because by the time you've selected the type of print you want the paper the size not to mention the carriage costs i can guarantee you that nine pound 95 is no longer nine pound 95 but having said all of that there's a fundamental point here i want to bring up as well because 
with due respect to all labs online, all companies, at the end of the day, you only become an order number. That's all you will be is an order number. Who will look after the quality of the print? Probably nobody. It'll go through a machine, it'll come out the other end, and that'll be it. It'll be posted to you through your door. So you're not in control of any of that. And also, you're not in control of how the eventual print will arrive on your doorstep. Will it be flat packed or will it be rolled up in a tube? Trust me, I've been there countless times when it's rolled up in a tube and you unroll it for the client or for the customer and the end or the corner has got a slight kink on it and it plays on your mind and you can't possibly give that product to a customer just because of a slight fold or a bend in the paper. It happens all the time. I'm certainly not here to have a go at online printing companies in any way, shape or form. They serve their purpose and they serve their purpose well. But don't think for one second that printing fine art images the way you want your images to eventually look is going to be cheap online at all because I can guarantee you this, it won't be. Now, printing from home, yes, okay, there's an outlay. You have to outlay for the printer, for the inks, and for the paper. And let's be honest, none of that is cheap, but everything comes with a price. Everything has an outlay. The camera that you're, you're using has an outlay. They're all expensive, but then they're cheap to run. Let's take an analogy of commuting to work, for instance. If you commute four or five miles to work every day, there's a massive outlay for a car for that journey. But if you do manage the outlay, now it's only the running costs. I know fuel's expensive, it's probably a bad analogy, but you understand what I'm saying. There then is, it becomes a running cost uh, that's a lot cheaper once you've made your initial outlay. So what happens if you didn't make that initial outlay, then you're gonna save all that lovely money, but that money will soon be absorbed very quickly when you're making two taxi journeys every day. Every day. You see what I mean? So at the end of the day, Everything, and I'm not here to kid you otherwise, everything will have an outlay, but then the running costs are really, really cheap. So let's take this printer here, for instance. Once you've made an initial cost for the printer, then you're going to need papers and you're going to need ink. Now, let's take the best or worst case scenario, depends on how you look at it, but let's invest in some really good, high quality, fine art paper. These papers here, a3, A3 plus will cost you about 35 pound. So let's work on 35 pound. There's 20 sheets in a box. Yes, let's break it down that much. So that's one pound 75 per sheet, one pound 75 per sheet. Now inks we know are quite expensive, but let's be honest, by the time you fill up an A3 bit of paper or an A3 plus bit of paper with all that lovely luscious color, then it's not going to cost you any more than 50p, I can guarantee you that. So now our outlay is looking pretty slim. It's looking pretty decent. Now it's, let's say £2.25. Let's say the worst case scenario is it's £2.50 per print. But it's more than that. You're in control of that whole process. You know for a fact how your images will eventually look. The size and the paper. You get to choose the paper quality. You get to choose the paper size. You get to choose eventually how that image will look. Better still, within minutes, you end up with a product that looks like that, whether it's in black and white or whether it's in color. But listen, listen to this noise. That's the noise that this fantastic image makes, but it makes it within minutes, not days not weeks, within minutes. So yes, of course there's an outlay, but the running costs are very slim after that. Now the how-to guide. Before I throw you guys into my PC, there's another elephant in the room. I know I'm going to upset some people now, but I've promised to show you how I print my images and I don't make any of this up for anybody. So before I throw you guys into my PC again, I want to talk to you about your screen because 
Every good photographer will tell you it's important that you use a calibrated screen. In the 20 years I've been a professional photographer, I've never calibrated one screen that I've ever owned. Ever, 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 nor will I. But hear me out for the reasons why. First of all, I would always suggest that you use a calibrated screen, except I use a very good quality Dell screen, which is designed for photographers and designers alike. I have three of them. They're all identical, two of them here in the studio and one in my office at home. But luckily my monitors have color profiles that I can set and I always set them to Adobe RGB. So all three of my monitors are set to Adobe RGB. And if I was to stand all three monitors next to each other, they would all look identical. So that's the reason why I've never calibrated any of my screens. I've always used screens that have color profiles built into them. If you don't have color profiles built into your screens, then I would suggest that you buy a good calibration kit and calibrate your monitors. But let's backtrack again before you rush out and spend money on calibrating your screens, because the chances of you printing something that looks identical to your screen is not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Now, <laughs> hear me out. If my reds on my screen are printing green on my printer, I've got a problem. But if my reds on my screen are printing reds on my printer, even if they're just a, a shade out, at the end of the day, my screen and my printer paper will never be displayed together. It's a bit like post-processing. I always tell people only you will ever see the before and the after. Now, of course, if the red tones from your screen and your printer are a mile out, then yes, calibrate your screen. But just take a test shot and you'll know. But take a tip from me. Every time I print an image from my printer, I always up the exposure by about a half to two thirds of a stop, always because through my years of experience, I know for a fact that the reasons why our screens and our print look different apart from the different lighting conditions, i.e. one's backlit, one's reflected light, for instance, then I know for a fact that our screens tend to be slightly brighter. We tend to turn the brightness of our screens up. I don't, I turn the brightness of my screen down to try and get a match. That's how I get away with out calibrating my screen. But that tip from me is always Take your image and raise the exposure by about a half a stop, two thirds of a stop before you print the files. So that's another elephant in the room that we've covered. And uh, yeah, okay, so if you guys disagree with that, by the way, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Although the idea of this tutorial is for me to show you how I print my work. So now we've covered that, let's throw you guys into my PC. I've decided to choose this image here, an image I captured a couple of years ago from Glen Coe. I'm sure some of you guys will recognize this area. Right, so this is part of my workflow in terms of how I go about printing my images. Well, first of all, what I want to do is to create a flattened layer on top. So Control, Alt, Shift, and E, or you could at this stage simply flatten the layer. But for the purpose of this tutorial, let's run through this. So I know for a fact now that this is, uh, in theory, a flattened layer on top. So I know that's 100% representative of this image. Now, here's a tip for you. Look at the paper size that we're using. This is an A3 bit of paper. What I would suggest that you do is, I know this is an A3 bit of paper, but whatever size that you decide you want to print at, what I would do is press Control and N, Command N on a Mac, and create a new canvas. I'm going to choose international papers and A3 is already selected there. Just confirm the size is 297 by 420. Well, I know that's right. I will have to change those two around, but it's dead easy. And I'm gonna click on OK. Let's come up to image, image rotation 90 degrees clockwise. Anti-clockwise, it makes no difference. I would always recommend setting a brand new canvas up to the size of the print that you're going to print. Then there's no cropping or anything. You'll get a full 100% representation on the screen of what you're going to print. 
Next, let's take our image. I'm going to drag and drop that across there. Remember, it's the top layer that's coming across that I know is 100% representative of the image. Now, as you can see, if I press Control and T to free transform this image, you can see that my image dimensions aren't quite right. So again, that's another great advantage of having the canvas size, the exact size of the print, because now I can just make an informed decision, crop where I feel that the image is right. And I'm going to choose something like that. That's good. And hit enter. Now I've done that, what I'm going to do now is, remember, I like to lighten my image just about half a stop. So I'm going to press Control, Shift and A to reintroduce the image back into ACR. I just do this as part of my standard workflow. And now I'm going to grab my exposure and ramp it up just a little bit. Okay, let's go to about a half a stop, maybe even slightly less, about there. Around about half a stop and we're going to click on OK. Next, we're going to press Control and P. And it's this simple. First of all, make sure the printer is the right printer, which it is. Next, click on Print Settings. Next, let's make sure that Photo Printing is selected. Borderless Printing. This, of course, is a personal choice, but I'm going to opt for Borderless Printing. I'm going to tick the box black and white as well because it's a black and white image. Next, choose the paper type. So the paper type here I'm using is the Pro Platinum and the size is A3. Quality is highest and the paper source, well, well, it's coming from the top feeder. So I'm going to leave that as is. Let's just double check these just to make sure everything is fine. That's it, I'm not gonna do any more than that. Then click on OK. Next is my printer profile. These are ICC profiles. Basically, what that'll do is once you select whatever profile that you're using, it will attempt to show you on the screen what your image will look like. So as I go through these ICC profiles, you will see this image start to change ever so slightly. It's only a, a good, estimation. So let's come down to Photo Paper Pro Platinum because that's what I'm using. We're going to click on that there. Next on this Dropbox, just make sure that Photoshop is managing the colors. We don't want the printer to manage the colors. We've already opted to do that through Photoshop. I click on that there just to show paper white. So that'll just show the, the, the whites within the image, what it looks like against the white of the paper. And now that's all in place and double checked. All we're going to do now is click print. And within about three minutes, listen to that noise. <laughs> that is pure quality. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video, the whys and the how to print guide at home. Yes, uh, with regards to the equipment that I used, uh, including the printer and the papers, I'll leave those links down below in the comment section. So if you wanna go and check those out for yourself, then please do so. And as I always say, help support the channel if you don't mind by giving this video a thumbs up. And if you're new here, you might wanna consider subscribing as well. Even though I say so myself, I've got one or two half decent videos in my back catalog. Till the next time guys, cheers.